Uh, well, in uh, this session, we would like to go back a little uh, to the lighter than aircrafts, basically because a lot of efforts and the science is uh, there. Uh, in the first or I think the second session, we just uh, briefed upon it. I touched upon all the things, but uh, I would like to go into the details of that. The first of them, that uh, the Montgolfier brothers. The name of the two brothers were Joseph Michael Montgolfier and Jakas <coughs> Atayni Montgolfier. They two were the brothers and uh, they were born in the family of paper manufacturers. So that was their family business. Uh, paper manufacturing, like some other things, was uh, rather a complicated business those days because uh, the machinery was not available. Almost all the things were required to be done by hand. Uh, if you know that the, in paper industry, they have to beat the wood or uh, the rags and make a pulp. So making the pulp is a very difficult process and for that, a lot of manpower was used in those days. So in such a huge and vast family, these two brothers were born. So right from the beginning, they had some exposure to whatever the technology was available in those days in making of the paper. As a result of that, they very soon realized that a strong and vast size sheet of paper is quite difficult to hold against the wind and it can simply blow you away. Just like the strength of the kites were known to the people in those days, uh, the strength of the paper was known to these Montgolfier brothers. And that is why the Joseph out of them was rather uh, uh, more interested in all this. So by making use of the paper, he made a parachute in those days. And not just made the parachute, but also jumped from the top of the family house, which was a two or three storied house, and successfully came down onto the lawns. So uh, they were quite uh, active fellows that way. In the year 1782, uh, while sitting around the fire, uh, Joseph noticed that uh, a lot of things are flying high up along with the fire, especially even the heavier lumbers of the wood were flying away and were getting uh, around here and there. And then he was thinking that there should be something uh, mysterious about this fire. He thought that there must have been some mysterious gas and uh, he was very happy to think that he was the first person to discover this all. Otherwise, nobody ever had uh, mentioned before that such mysterious gas is present in the burning log and uh, he also named that gas as the Montgolfier gas. And then he also immediately established that uh, the gas has got some curious uh, uh, mysterious property of lifting the things up in the air and like the gravity which pulls the things towards the land, he named that property as levity which leviates the things up in the air. So this was the initial thinking of that and to establish that it really is some mysterious gas, he conducted an experiment. He prepared a rectangular frame of uh, lightweight wood and on the top of that he made one dome of taffeta. Taffeta is a sort of the raw nylon which is very closely woven. So that is called as a taffeta. It's a lightweight because it's a, a, a silk, sorry, not the nylon, it's a silk. Uh, and that silk is uh, quite lightweight. So he used that taffeta and to make an experiment inside the house, he ignited a bunch of uh, papers, sheaf of papers and just held this frame above it. And it suddenly rose up in the air and then just went and hit the ceiling. He was so amazed and he was so delighted to see that he thought that this can be the medium. This will definitely be able to lift a person and what not if the proper size and shape is done. He immediately 
contacted his brother and asked him to come because they were in the two different cities at that time he invited him to come with a lot of tafeta and uh, he told him that you just come here i want to show you something that you definitely or nobody else has seen before i will show you the most amazing thing on the land so the brother also his uh, hastily came with a lot of tafeta cloth carrying with him and then they set up to make the experiments with the help of his brother then they set up to work and they constructed a really large dome and then they called it as a balloon so it was a tafeta balloon that they constructed uh, on 14 december uh, 1782 they conducted their experiment the balloon was uh, uh, not capable of lifting some serious weight along with it but uh, was quite large in size at least about uh, 2000 cubic foot of the volume was there and uh, they ignited the logs kept the balloon on that and after some time it really took off and it went quite a distance about a couple of miles and uh, landed and the people around were so terrified to see something coming down from the uh, sky of such a huge size that they immediately attacked it afterwards and with the pikes they just uh, burst it and uh, destroyed it the success of their experiment energized them a great and they decided that yes this is possible it is possible to lift a large weight in such type of the uh, balloon they examined the balloon after the flight which was stone but they could uh, discover that if it was completely the tafeta silk only then the heat spoils that uh, uh, fabric because uh, it is a natural uh, uh, fabric natural uh, material and with the heat it gets deteriorated so that is why they decided that uh, that should be protected and since they were the paper manufacturers themselves they had good variety of paper with them they decided that uh, this silk should be covered from inside with a layer of paper so that the heat will be uh, absorbed by the paper if at all something is destroyed then the paper will be destroyed and the silk outside will not be destroyed so accordingly they set up to make really a large balloon and they did complete it uh, you will be surprised they made the balloon of the capacity 28000 cubic foot of the volume so really an enormous balloon that balloon was uh, prepared some special hearth was made for that to burn the logs and collect the smoke they still believed that the smoke has got that property of what they had decided to call as levity <laughs> just opposite of gravity so uh, they i think uh, they never came uh, out of that they never realized that it is just the hot air that matters there is nothing like uh, levity or there is nothing like uh, montgolfier gas or anything they were until up to the end under the impression that uh, it was some mysterious gas so a good hearth was uh, constructed and that balloon was uh, inflated now this was done public because the first experiment was done privately so nobody knew what was going on and that is why their balloon was destroyed now this balloon was too expensive to get destroyed so they announced that such and such experiment is going to be conducted and then the uh, stalwarts in the society were present at that time so everybody knew in paris that such experiment is going to take place and uh, the weight of that uh, complete balloon went up to 225 kilograms and uh, it was from inside coated with three layers of thin paper to protect the fabric from the intense heat that would be developed <coughs> nevertheless it could lift very little weight along with that it uh, traveled up to 2 kilometers of the distance and then it attained the height of uh, very high 3000 meters of the height 
was attained and in 10 minutes it landed outside the uh, outskirts of Paris and the experiment was really very successful that uh, not only attracted several people but also the dukes and duchess were impressed by that the king himself was very impressed by all these things and that is why a financial support also started coming in everybody wanted to know how this is done and can it really lift a man in the air so that was the next step to be taken because a big balloon can be constructed now only the question is that how it will lift more amount of weight so that one or more persons can be carried up in the air now it was not difficult for them to estimate how much weight it will be lifting because actually since no weight was attached underneath the balloon went too high and uh, uh, that is why they were convinced that with the weight it will be going up to the moderate height the same balloon that they used in their uh, uh, trial flight they modified it repaired it here and there and then decided to make the man flight which took place on the November 21st of 1783 the passengers were the two people one was a doctor himself called Rosier and the another was a brave soldier Marguis the Advanced. he was the uh, from the army he volunteered to go up in this balloon and both of them were made to stand exactly opposite to each other for the balancing purpose and then a rim was constructed with a sort of the gallery around and then the experiment was conducted about uh, 14 buttons that means the pins were there to hold the balloon onto the hearth until it inflated and started to lift up as soon as the lines were dropped the balloon ascended majestically and it uh, went up to about 3000 foot 25 minutes of the flight and landed about 2 miles from Paris safely. So the experiment conducted by the Montgolfier brothers was uh, completely successful. Everybody was amazed by seeing that flight and thought that it would be attainable. A number of ideas were coming up after that in the newspapers and uh, uh, in the different books. One of the ideas uh, I liked very much. The people were not knowing perhaps at that time that when the earth moves around, the atmosphere in the, of the earth also moves around. So it is not that the earth is moving and the atmosphere is steady, but uh, at that time the people didn't know about it. What they thought is that, that if we can make the balloon and take it very high up in the air, then the earth underneath will rotate and when they will come down, they will be able to land in any westerly direction thousands of the kilometers away. So that was their ideas because they were not uh, knowing at that time that the atmosphere also rotates along with the uh, earth. So such type of the impact was made by the flight of Montgolfiers and the Montgolfier brothers made their mark as the first people to make a successful balloon and ascend up in the air and land down safely. For books by Mr. Madhav Khare, visit www.jotsnaprakashan.com. For many other products from paper gliders up to remote control planes, exhibitions, workshops, lectures, etc., write to lareos.aeroclub at gmail.com or kharemg at gmail.com. <laughs>